Animal cruelty. What does that make you think of? <coughs> Circuses and zoos and how crowded the animals are, while many times brutally treated, the abandonment of cats and dogs, and even worse, the training of animals like pit bulls to become vicious killers in dog fights. <coughs> There are also rodeos and bullfights where animals are tortured and killed. In the early part of the 19th century, things were much worse. Animals, especially horses, were being worked into exhaustion or death, mercilessly beaten to drive them harder. Dog fighting was a common sport, while dog catchers would drown the dogs they caught to get them off the streets. And since they were paid by the dog, they often stole family pets to drown so as to collect more money. Many people wished that this treatment of animals would change, but one man knew that change could only happen through action, not hope alone. The man was Henry Berg, and through his actions, his legacy was born. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the ASPCA. At first, he had no desire to champion the rights of animals. As one of his early journal entries demonstrates, he even joined the locals in Athens as they stoned stray dogs to death. But his views changed at a bullfight in Spain where he witnessed the killing of eight bulls, but not before they eviscerated over 20 horses. In Russia, he realized the power of authority. He watched as peasants were beating their horses to get them to move and asked a Russian official if he could have his men stop it, and they did. It was here the path to his dream was made clear, and at a stop in England on his way back to New York, he spoke with the president of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the Earl of Harrowby, to learn how Europe was already dealing with animal rights. When Henry Berg returned to New York from London in 1865, he pleaded on behalf of the mistreated animals, which he called the mute servants of mankind, while others simply called them dumb animals. He gave a very powerful and successful speech on the cruelty that these animals suffer, and stressed, This is a matter purely of conscience. It has no perplexing side issues. It is amoral in all its aspects. Soon after, he created the Declaration of the Rights of Animals. He had so many well-known dignitaries join his cause and actually put their names to paper by signing the declaration that nine days later the ASPCA was officially formed with Henry Berg the president. The city prosecutor, a supporter of Berg, gave him the authority to use the police and to arrest anyone breaking the new anti-cruelty laws. Finally, he had the power to enforce his dream. He soon became well-known, and Gerald Carson, writing for American Heritage magazine in 1940, summed up Berg's life well. In Henry Berg, a reformed dilettante who founded the ASPCA, many saw a latter-day St. Francis of Assisi, but others, especially the cruel or the thoughtless, regarded him as the great meddler. There always have been people that have cared about animals and felt that they were part of their family, but it wasn't sort of a generally accepted uh, idea. So things have changed a lot for us. And a lot of what animals did back then was they actually did work for people. Henry Berg first went to the aid of what seems to have been his favorite animals, the majestic horses. They were the main way of transportation at the time and essential to everyone for work. So as he stepped in front of the first horse that was being beaten, he said to the teamster whipping his horse, My friend, you can't do that anymore. Can't beat my own horse? The teamster shot back. The devil I can't. After that, all traffic came to a halt as Berg insisted on removing all poorly treated or ill horses. He also went to the aid of dogs as he helped pass a law to keep dogs from being used to pull carts without a proper $67 license. 
Men who could not afford horses used the dogs to do the same type of work hours on end and a lot of the time providing no shelter and allowing them to eat from the garbage. Hemiberg had a major feud with long-standing dogfighting promoter Kit Burns. Actually, dog pits, where dogs would kill smaller animals before fighting each other, was a very popular pastime. <laughs> Kit Burns owned the largest pit, but only one year after the ASPCA set him as a target, the dogfighting business was over. Hemingberg developed a love for helpless animals, and he did all he could to bring justice to anyone who violated animal cruelty laws. Many people opposing him tried to discredit him by calling him a hypocrite. They said that he cared too much for animals and not enough for people in need. This Mary Ellen Wilson um, case came about, and the woman who was trying to save this child uh, uh, went to law enforcement. They had no laws to enforce. There were no laws about child abuse at the time. So that's why she went to Henry Burr, because he had at least initiated the process of protecting animals. One key opposition leader was P.T. Barnum, a famed owner of an animal museum. In a series of letters between the two, it's clear they had a dislike for each other. It proves that he obviously did not care only about animals because he was instrumental in starting the uh, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Henry Burke died during the blizzard of 1888, shortly after his wife's death. Before his death, he was able to convince 34 other states to form similar societies, following by his laws, guidelines, and helping to pass similar laws. The ASPCA continued to receive large donations and grants that allowed them to move to a larger building. Henry Berg had a dream, a dream I could relate to as I hope do all school children my age. That was that humanity would learn to treat animals humanely. No matter what else happens, it's always that animal first and foremost. And that's why we're all here, is for that animal. You know, so, so basically what we do is we just, we do what's best at the time for the animal. It seems like a difficult task. Nevertheless, he knew he had to start small and make changes close to home first, and hope it would spread. Deep down, he knew he had to achieve that dream to save animals. The ASPCA and similar organizations are doing all they can, but they have no jurisdiction in foreign countries where dogs are tortured and killed in front of their families to be used as food, or in Spain where bulls are brutally murdered by the cowardly acts of matadors. And even here at home, where zoos, circuses, and worst of all, rodeos, torture, terrorize, and kill helpless animals. Crime in the city, and I guess the crime in any you know, big city, is animal cruelty doesn't fall on the top of that list. However, because of Henry Berg, today there is much less animal cruelty. The newspaper, The Citizen, best summed up his life's work so firm a hold did he take on the public sense of right that it is impossible that his work shall not be continued. He has made too many converts to render it all likely that his commonwealth will ever relapse into a condition to witness cruelty to animals without resentment. Henry Berg and his legacy, the ASPCA, are stronger today than ever and that is exactly the way he dreamed it to be. Now when I say animal cruelty, what are you thinking? Henry Berg and the ASPCA.